All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation three to the power of x plus three to the power of x is equal to 12. So <clears throat> my only variable in this equation is x, so that's the variable I'm gonna be solving for. And now for my solution, So I have three to the power of X plus three to the power of X is equal to 12. And what I'm first gonna do is factor out three to the power of X. So I get three to the power of X times one plus one is equal to 12. Now one plus one is two. So I get three to the power of X times two is equal to 12. So from here, we wanna isolate X. And to do that, we have to get rid of this times two by dividing both sides by two. So now these two cancel out and I am left with three to the power of X is equal to 12 divided by two, which is six. So now I have in basically another equation from this much larger equation. So this is much more simplified. I have three to the power of X is equal to six. So to solve this, well, we know that X is gonna be a decimal because three to the power of one is three and three to the power of two is nine. So X is gonna be somewhere in between one and two. So we wanna find the exact value of X. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna first start by taking the log on both sides. So I get log three to the power of X is equal to log six. And from here, if I have something in the form log A to the power of B, I can move this exponent B to the front. So this turns into B times log a. So I've log three to the power of x and I can move x to the front. So I get x times log three is equal to log six. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by log three because again, we wanna isolate x. So by doing this, these two cancel out and I get X is equal to log six over log three. Now, what I'm gonna do is rewrite log six as log of three times two. So I have log three times two over log three And if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log of three times two is equal to log of three plus log of two. And I have this over log of three. So now this turns into log of three over log three plus log of two over log three. And now these two cancel out. So I get X is equal to one plus log of two over log of three. Now, log of two is equal to 0 0.301. And log of three is equal to 0 0.4771. So I get X is equal to one plus 0 0.301 over 0 0.4771.
and 0 0.301 over 0 0.4771 is 0 0.6309. So I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.6309, which is equal to 1.6309. So this is my solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by rewriting 2 to the power of 101 as 2 to the power of 100 plus 1. Now, the reason I did that is because now I can use this property that states that if I have something from a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 100 plus 1 is going to equal 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1. And now I have this minus 2 to the power of 100. Now from here, I can factor out 2 to the power of 100. So I get 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm left with 2 to the power of 100 times 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. Now, there is actually another method of solving this problem. So going back to the problem, I have 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. Now, before, I rewrote 101 as 100 plus 1. But how about I rewrite 100 as 101 minus 1? So now I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 minus 1. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100 and 1 plus negative 1. Now, if I use that property again, that states that a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And now if I factor out 2 to the power of 101, I get 2 to the power of 101 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 1 half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. So that's the second method of solving this problem.